Welcome to Road Riot. I'm Joshua Bardwell. And I'm Paul Nurkula. We have something really exciting for you guys today. So Cine Whoops are one of my favorite tools, right? So the, these Cine Whoops, this is the Shendrone Squirt. We've got a couple of them. What I love about these is that they can do things that other camera systems can't. You can't go from really high to low to through to under to over in the way that these kinds of systems can. And I've been really inspired by people like Robert McIntosh, who is the, the founder of Real Study. There's a skateboarding video called Pretty Sweet, and I've Robert McIntosh made the intro for that video back in like 2012 when drones like didn't even fly. He did this awesome single take movement where he started up, over, around, through, down, just like we're trying to create here today. That style of filmmaking really inspired me, so I got really excited about the Shen Drone Squirt when Andy Shen sent it to me. Okay, so let's break down the parts that are gonna go into this build. And in case you didn't figure it out by now, this is not just Paul and me talking about how cool Cinewhoops are for two hours. This is a build video. So the Shen Drone Squirt swings three inch props that are cut down to like 2.8 inches. So the idea with these ducts is that they actually increase airflow as it comes in. So as the airflow, as air gets pulled into the ducts, it increases the speed at which it goes through, and that in turn adds extra thrust. And so in order to make this fly better, the ducts are there, and you have to have the, the props as finely, as close as you can to the outside of the duct. Companies like Gemfan have come out with props that are actually designed for the Shendrone Squirt. Like it became a popular enough thing that they designed props custom made for it. Okay, and in case it's not obvious, there are links to all of the parts for this build, including these props and everything else we're using. On my channel. Down in the video description, <laughs> stop. Down in the video description of this and for sale on the Rotor Riot store if you want to follow along with this build. Okay, motors. What are we doing for motors? Let's crack this out while you tell us what we're doing. So these are the T-Motor F20 V2s. Uh, we chose the 3250 kV variant. And these are some pretty smooth motors. Um, when you're going for smooth f flying, you definitely don't want a super, super notchy motor. So we've got the uh, Hobbywing G2 stack. Uh, this is a 60 amp ESC. It's probably overkill for this overkill. drone, but I love, like, I'm sponsored by Hobbywing. I love Hobbywing. I use everything from Hobbywing. Okay. But this is just, like, the perfect ESC. Is this the if same ESC Vanover races with? The 60 amp Hobbywing? I think so. This is like, Vanover raced this for a whole season and said it was the most bulletproof ESC. I raced it for a whole season, too. I'm just sorry. I mean, one of, there's, one of them is, I'm just, you know, let's not get into it. And then also we're going to be working with the DJI FPV air unit. We're going to, this is going to be high definition build. Mm -hmm. You certainly can. Do you fly typically high def or do you fly analog mostly? I fly a lot of both, but for cine stuff, um, I definitely lean on the side of uh, the air unit, especially for environments like this, where you can kind of, you go forever, you have no breakup, no multipathing. Um, and just the clearest signal possible. So. Well, one of the things I love most about flying with DJI is that if for some reason your GoPro video craps out, you have like a semi-usable backup. It's very nice to have that 1080 recording on board. This frame that we're working with is the Shen Drones Squirt, and that was designed by Andy Shen. Yep. Just for anybody who doesn't know, who is Andy Shen? He's, he's, a, he's my sensei. He's <laughs> and started designing drone frames way back when, and it eventually came up with this design. Andy was designing drone frames like when before, drones. before drone frames <laughs> were a thing. And I think we kind of have forgotten how much we got from him. Yeah. If you want to check out his website, it's shendrones.com, right? Shendrones.com. One of my favorite things about Andy is that he does design logs yes. of all of the missteps and failures of designing a quadcopter frame before yeah. finally, sometimes he results in a commercial frame and sometimes he just gives up and says this doesn't work. Thank you Andy. We all wouldn't be here w without the work that you did. <clears throat> where do we start the build, Paul? The best place to start is with a little bit of frame assembly. That's where I like to start, um, especially because we're going to need to Loctite everything. Uh, so really? with, with all of these guys, um, I find that there ends up being like some sort of weird oscillation that is never like detectable on footage or anything like that but it eventually works the screws loose. So, okay. especially when you're like with the ducks, like you really have to push them on and off and pull them on and off. And yeah. when you do that a whole bunch, like eventually you're gonna start losing your screws and stuff like that. So I lock tight. I don't, I almost never lock tight. I actually take a lot of heat for never lock tighting. I also, I just check this your screws. This is the screws. one time. Check your screws that they're tight and you'll be fine, but don't, not on this build. Don't get, get some screwed. Loctite, get some Loctite, blue Loctite, right? Blue Loctite. Blue Loctite, not Absolutely. the red stuff. And uh, some people may be used to seeing me be the guy <laughs> giving the instructions and taking the lead, but today I'm just uh, learning from Paul and providing comic relief. 
Good to see people finally working in their strengths. Uh -huh. So are you uh, just dipping those screws in the Loctite a little bit before you put them on and you're mm -hmm. installing the vertical standoffs, right? Yeah, so there's three uh, tiny little ones that are on the outside and then there's four on the inside. Okay. Um, different size standoffs. I don't know the lengths of are them. Are they different size? Yes. That's a little bit annoying. So the, the, no, it's great because the ducts, so the ducts don't go all the way through here so you That's can see it. the thing. So you need the smaller ones on the outside so and in the middle. Let's take a look. We got these smaller ones on the outside and mm -hmm. longer ones. Where are they going to go? They're going to go on the floor in the middle. One, two, gotcha. Four. The frames. And then out. the, look, and then this will all sit all the way through it. And it actually look, ends up looking really good because then you have this full mm -hmm. TPU kind of covered. Gotcha. Yeah, it's great. But you have to remember not to put the long ones on the Oh, the, the longer spots. ones are the, I see. The longer ones are the green ones. Yes, yeah. The black ones are the smaller ones. Oh, that makes it easy. At least they're a different color. Andy loves his pastel colors. Also loves his dogs. What, are, what kind of dogs does he have? Are they, um, Corgi. And, he has uh, an he Instagram has account his, for his Corgi. Look at that. I'm thinking about Corgis and I put the wrong standoff on. Wow, Paul. Let's put some pictures of corgis up on this video. Of Maybe of Andy's monkey. own corgi. Yeah. Drew's scratching his head behind me as if, no, we'll edit this part out. But no, corgis. <laughs> yeah, the standoffs are great. great. Uh, I would put the motors on next. Do you okay. want to do that? Um, I'll be happy to do that. I, I would believe. also lock tight those. Okay. For the same exact reason. They will use a duct to hold all this stuff in place. No, oh, that's convenient. <laughs> So I'm installing these motors. Well, he's finishing installing those motors, I'm gonna start opening up the ESC because that'll be our next step. It's a good idea. I haven't done this uh, because I'm assuming that we've done our research. It's a good idea when you do a build the very first time, check the length of the motor. Just take your screw and hold it against the frame where it's gonna be and see if it is gonna extend past the end of the motor base because if the screw is too long and touches the windings, it will cut into the insulation on the windings and damage them and basically destroy your motor. And you may be thinking, well, the screws came with the motor, so surely they're the right length. But the problem is that the motor designer doesn't know how thick your frame is gonna be. And the, you, they've made some assumptions. So you always wanna double check this. I didn't double check this, and these screws are like half a millimeter away from touching the windings. I mean, they are really, really close, but not touching. So if you buy the Hobbywing stack as like a one complete kit, like the both the flight controller and the ESC, it comes with all of the hardware you need to like the build the stack and, and the standoffs, all that inside of the frame. But we have brought ourselves separate individual ones. So we're kind of scrounging for some extra stuff. Because we knew that some of you would have bought them separate individually too not because we're unprepared. So what we've got here for hardware is, these are 25 millimeter M3 screws, and these are some uh, just little nylon threaded spacers. These are actually metal, but you'll probably use nylon. Yeah. What I would suggest you do is just get like an M3 nylon spacer assortment. Yeah. Um, pretty sure it's sold on the Rotorite store. There's a link in the video description if, there, if it is. Um, it comes with these spacers in various lengths. Well, Joshua is here. screwing around. Yeah, uh -huh. I'm gonna go ahead and tin up our ESC so that we have it already. Um, before I work on any electronics, I always make sure that it's tinned and that we will be able to make nice clean joints on it. That was not a clean joint because I'm standing so far away from this for the purposes of the camera. So let's get a close up here of the placement. So there is a front and a back, right? Let's be clear, how can they identify the front and the back? You need to leave space for the FPV air unit. And this like this is the version of the Shendron squirt that's built for the air unit. So if you look at the back, you can see that there's plenty of room left for the, right. uh, the magical box. So here we've got a set of 20 millimeter holes and another set of 20, well, like one, two, three and one, two, three. That's sort of the front. And then this space back here with no holes is the back. Mm -hmm. And we've got four of our M3 screws going through the front set of 30 millimeter mounting holes, the outside one, giving us some spacing from the bottom plate. Excellent and work. Normally I would just mount the ESC with the capacitor and the battery leads poking out the back. Me too. But not this time. Not on the squirt. Because why? So because we have to put the FPV air unit out the back, essentially like this, it, with the capacitor there and the big battery tabs on it's this all in the way. ESC, it's getting in the way. So how should we do it? You show us. So I would just take everything and turn it sideways. Okay. And the capacitor I've, going out one side. Yep. And okay. I've played around with it a bunch and if you put the uh, ducts on it will still fit with the capacitor. And what we're going to need to do also is we're just going to bend the capacitor up a little bit, right? To keep it out I, of the I way? I actually had it where I wanted it. Oh, you did? Yep. That was right where you wanted it? Yep. Okay. Yeah, so like off to the side a little bit and okay. then it all We'll see right when there. we put the ducts on. You'll see why the capacitor has to go there. Exactly. Okay. 
Cool. Next so step. we need to put the battery lead on. This okay. is probably a little bit too long. I was trying to kind of measure it out. So like essentially once the standoffs are on here and then the top plate's on, you don't need a ton of length on the squirt to reach the battery length. So I'm thinking something like, yeah. Okay. So I'll cut it here. I heard you weren't that impressed with my soldering. You're making fun of my soldering. There was a video about uh, the white noise I remember race that video. wire. I remember that video. And your biggest complaint about it was that they were hard to solder. Because the pads are so close together that you bridge the pads. No. Never a once. Lot, a lot of people have that problem. Before we try to put the XC60 pigtail on, we want to tin up the uh, lead so that it's easier to get make that joint. Don't breathe this stuff. This yeah. stuff is really bad for you. Yeah. Very bad for you. Okay. So these are now tinned up. Our positive is towards the front end, the way we have this configured. You should always double check this. A few times. Yeah. Double, triple check that you're red to, red to positive and black to negative. But there's a, there's a camera guy there and there and there and they're all watching too so they know mm -hmm. that we did it right. So soldering is a thing that a lot of people struggle with in this hobby because nobody gets into FPV because they want to learn to solder. They want to learn to fly, and soldering is just an annoying thing that you got to get out of the way in order to get in the air. But if you're bad at soldering, your quadcopters are going to fly bad and fall out of the sky. So this is not a soldering tutorial, but if you're struggling to solder this great big XT60, that may be a sign that you should practice soldering some more before you finish the rest of the build, because this is the most forgiving of the pads, the great big ones. The little tiny ones are just going to come off. But it's also the most difficult because you need so much heat. Right, but the point is, it, it, this will, if your technique is bad, this will show you that your technique is bad. So what's good technique? What's good technique? Good technique is to have a hot temperature controlled iron. If you have one of those like 30 watt irons that isn't temperature controlled, it doesn't have a thermostat that you turn up and down, that's not as good. Clean tip, clean silver shiny tip, not an oxidized tip. If you put solder on the tip and the solder balls up instead of spreading out on the tip, stop. Do not proceed. You need a new tip or you need to clean your tip. If you are having trouble getting the solder to flow, and it's all craggy and not turning liquid, that is a sign your iron is not hot enough. It's not driving heat into the joint. Another thing you generally don't want to do is you, you want to lay the wire flat against the pad. You don't want to come out like this because then there's not a lot of surface contact between the end of the wire. See, the strands of the wire are just kind of like this, and they're not, you're not getting good surface contact. How'd you... Sometimes you can get away with it. But yeah, I want the, I want the leads to come out, because this is a really high gauge wire. You can picture like the battery strap going on and holding it like that, yeah. <laughs> um, so that then the lead of the battery will just come in and plug it on the back like that, so. Probably not going to eject many of these batteries anyway, so it really doesn't matter if that's a very sound joint. That's fine. Next step. Motors. Motors. So we've got the XC60 wired up. Yes. Now we got to do the motors. Yes. I got three motor wires. Yep. I got three motor pads. Yep. Does it matter the order? It does not matter the order depending on who you ask and how you want to do it. So each of the motors has to spin a different direction, right? The, cor the opposite corners spin opposite or the same direction as each other and then next to each other spin the opposite direction. There's two ways to change the motor direction. The first is you can solder, so there's three wires, those are the individual phases of the motor. If you swap any two phase, the direction that the motor spins is reversed. But you can also use software to program the ESC and change the direction digitally. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm kind of of the opinion that you just get it right when you build it. That's just easier to just How do you know which way they're gonna Oh, you just you swap the leads to yeah, make the motor spin the exactly. right way. Okay. But some to people and prefer I'm, it the other way. I'm of the opinion when I when I solder it, I just run the wires straight. It makes clean, neat wiring. Mm -hmm. And then rather than pulling my soldering iron back out, I just <clears> rather do it on the computer. One way is not better than the other. It totally doesn't matter as long as the motor ends up spinning the right direction at the end of the day. Exactly. All right. We're going to solder these up. Cool. So I'm kind of just gauging out the distance of the wire that I want. I pull it out, get it nice and tight. I always have a mistake I make where I get the motor exactly the right length, then I strip it and tin it and cut it, and then it's too short. I always leave myself like three millimeters of slack to avoid it. Because once you've made a motor wire too short, it's a real pain to fix. I did that. I just misspoke. If you cut wires to exactly the right length, they'll be too short. A little bit of slack is good in a quad because yeah. a little bit of slack also helps take up vibration. If things are really taut, 
then when you crash and stuff, then they break. Okay, one, two, three, there you go. All right. Should probably put a zip tie or something on that, but we'll do that yeah, all at we'll the get end. To that. We'll get to that. And this is all, none of this is an exact science. Like at this point, it kind of becomes an art project. It's how pretty do you want to make it versus mm -hmm. how effective. Well, not that pretty and effective have to be mutually exclusive, but I'm much more on the just get it done and flying side because, well, more than half of my quads are race quads and they all get beat to crap. It must be really different for you flying a Cinewhoop because Cinewhoops are, you know, are a lot less I beat know, to crap. I it's so nice. You know? All right, so the front two, uh, I'm going to run them underneath the flight controller. I'm just going to pass them ar around instead of in front of the standoffs. <laughs> just like lift this guy up a little, huh? Oh, yeah. If you do that, you want to be real careful when you push it down not to pinch the wires. You know what? I'm not even going to cut those back. I think they're going to mm -hmm. be just right. Okay. So got we've the motor got soldered up. All of our motors soldered up. Very important to double check that there are no solder bridges. Correct. That none of these are touching each other, basically. So the way I yeah. do that is give the motor a little spin. And if it freewheels at all, it's fine. If it stops immediately. That is really clever. There's a principle oh, yeah. called FET drag. Which means that when two phases are shorted to each other, didn't know the word for that. It will actually kind of self-break. Yep. I'm trying to use the screwdriver to short these two yeah, this holes. Will work better. Oh, there you go. Oh yeah. Look. So now there's a ton of resistance in order to move the motor, but then when I release it, it spins, and that's how you know if you have a shorter knot. That's a really good tip. Okay, motor soldered up. Next, flight controller. Right. Flight controller is super easy because it comes with this plug. You just plug it in here. You plug it in there. So here we go. Boom. Plug. And. Go ahead, I'll let you put them in. Oh, we need these spacers, don't we? Yeah. Uh, here's the, here are the spacers. We jumped the gun. When you put those spacers on, don't screw them down so tight that you crush those gummies. Those gummies are for vibration isolation. Vibration isolation is important. It makes the quad run smoother, and it helps protect the delicate electronics from damage when you crash. Uh, that's not as big a deal on a Cinewhoop, which shouldn't be crashed super hard, super fast most of the time. Watch we, me. We would hope. <laughs> but especially if you're building a racing or freestyle quad, that's why the ESC has gummies on it, even though the ESC doesn't actually have vibration-sensitive instruments like the flight controller. So squeeze them down tight enough that the gummies are just a little compressed, but not so tight that they're completely crushed and the vibration isolation is <clears throat> defeated. So the flight controller, we have this plugged in, and then we can plug into the ESC. Okay. And we turn the ESC sideways. Yep. Do we need to turn the flight controller sideways? No. Okay. So because we're not using, the, so the ESC is built to be put in forward so that yeah. you just wire each corner directly together. Now we've turned it, so each motor is now corresponding to a incorrect the, pad. The, the, yeah, exactly. So we're going to have to do some work in software later, so okay. we might as well just cleanly mount our flight controller okay. this way because we're going to have to do work on it anyway. One thing I can't help but notice is that puts the USB port facing the back. Is that, is that bad? A, there's no way, to, so with the squirt, there's no way to heat, reach the flight control or the USB anyway. Oh, because of that. Because of the ducts. So you have to take it apart to use the USB. Not ideal. No, Room it's not for ideal. improvement, Andy. Well, squirt I've always like, thought about like getting like a USB extension, like just like a little oh, one to so yeah. run it out at the bottom idea. or something. But yeah. Okay. So right. that is one annoying thing about the squirt. But once, like the beauty of this is like once you build it, you have everything working, you put it together, you just don't ever have to change anything. You don't break props on it. You don't burn electronics, like it just is done and it works. All right, so we're gonna put these nuts on top. Um, put a couple on just to yeah. keep it in place. Best case is if those are nylock nuts. These are the only ones we had on hand. <laughs> and um, these will back out eventually. If you put them on tight enough that they don't back out, then they crush the gummies, right? So nylock would be better. But this is what we're going with for now because that's what we got. Yep. All right. Next okay. step, air unit. Uh, yeah. So the air unit. I haven't built. I've only built like one quad, uh, quad with the air unit, and I still use my own receiver just because I, uh, my my air unit transmitter is broken. Why is it broken, Paul? My friend poured Powerade on it. His friend poured Powerade on it. Now there are some flight controllers where you can just literally plug the air unit into the flight controller. That's so nice and long. The hobby wing is not one of those. We're gonna be soldering this up, but we will literally only have one, two, three, four, five, six solder joints, and then we're just done with the build, pretty much. We got uh, red power. Two to 4S. Two to 4S voltage. It can The air unit can handle natively. If you're going above 4S, the uh, fl hobby wing flight controller actually has a three amp regulator that you can use. We're going to use it anyway. 12 volt. 3 yeah. amp 12 volt. That's more than enough. We're going to use this anyway. 
if somebody one day plugs in a 6S battery by accident, it won't fry the thing. Black is ground. Future proofing. White and gray are to let you get battery voltage in your goggles. And then yellow is the control connection, and that's another ground wire. And if that all didn't make sense, we got a graphic showing you exactly where to put these wires on this flight controller. We're going to go ahead and solder them up. Uh, let's mount the air unit first. Or that. So that we... We're going to go ahead and mount that air unit. Then we'll solder it up. Um, so if you look at the back, there's a little hole here, conveniently placed, so that when you put the no. USB ah, in, you can brilliant. fit. You can still get access to it and uh, update the What about your SD card? Comes out the top. Andy, brilliant. you're a savant, and we don't deserve you. So, so I was just wondering, like, oh, how do we mount this inside of the frame? And so I go and look at the one that we have pre-built over here. And it turns out there's a little TPU mount. A little 3D printed TPU. You just mount. go. Okay. Boop. So we gotta get those stand ups. Stand it up in there. Yeah, so now we, gotta we get those stand ups first. Back to our Loctite, we're gonna put our big frame standoffs on. Okay, so TPU mount thingy. Let's show them. Hold on, don't rush, don't rush. Show I'm so them. excited though. So, so we got this TPU <laughs> like... mount. Here's the piece. It's gonna go with the flat side down, over the standoffs, and half of you guys are going, of course, Bardwell, what do you think we are, idiots? And half of you are going, no, do it slower! I got you guys. So it's I wanted go to point like out this. one thing is, so at the beginning of this video, we started out like pretty evenly balanced on this table, and progressively, Bardwell has pushed me further and further out That's to the side true. of the room. That's not true. That's not true. It just goes in, and it sits right there. It's so good. Okay, so that's gonna go in. Yep. And then this is gonna come around. Yeah, I put it inside of the standoff. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, inside the standoff. And then it's all. And gonna it's gonna get there. soldered up exactly like that diagram. Boom, diagram. Okay, so next we're gonna put the camera on because the camera is the lowest part of the front of this machine. And so we have this mount uh, created by our own Julian at Rotor Riot. And by our, I mean there. <laughs> and it bends back and sits down a little bit further so that it's flush to the ground, which is actually pretty awesome. So like if I push okay. this all the way down, okay, I might, gets... have, I might have this upside down. No, I don't, okay. How can you tell if you got it upside down? It's because now it sits all the way on the ground. So it's just like, it just got its chin down on the ground. I like see. This. You see? Oh, I see. I, I see. The top part kind of angles up. Yeah. And then let's see. The, let me see if I can figure this out. The camera is just going to go into these screw holes. Right but here. wait, Josh, what happens if you put it on upside down? Well, you just flip it over. Right? In soft. Oh, but you can do it. But you can do it in the goggles. Did you oh, the camera? Did you know you could do that, Bartolo? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did that. I screwed that up. So I'm gonna take these. Well, why don't you share that personal I story? Will. About it. Oh my God! So Joshua, what happens if you put the camera in upside down? Well, funny you should ask that, Paul, because the camera actually has an up-facing arrow on the back, so you can make sure to install it right side up. But if you do install the camera upside down, you can flip it in the image in the DJI goggles. So the camera is installed right side up, right here. We got these one and two screws right here. This bottom screw sets the angle. What angle do you typically fly at for commercial shooting and Cinewhoop stuff? No more than 10 degrees. It's like so very it's, low. It's angle. almost all very, very slow and go. This is probably more angle than you would want. Yeah, it's but like 20. You can't. You can always fly. I find that it's always easier to fly slower mm -hmm. with a higher tilt than it is to fly faster with a lower tilt. Cameras installed on the front. Next, what's next? No, the only thing that's left is to install the duct. The ducts. But okay. it's really hard to put props on after you've put the ducts on. Wow. So I like to put the props on first okay. and then put the ducts on. As weird as that sounds. Okay, so I went over and got some props uh, for this build. And we're going to run the props out. So that way. Can I show you a pro tip? He's going to use a motor wrench because you can't grip the motors tight enough to cinch down the nuts. And this is a battery strap. In fact, it is the Shendrone's battery strap that comes with the squirt. Pro this tip. Is the last one. Pro tip. It's rubberized. It's got like a grippy rubber finish. If you wrap it around the motor, and I cinch the battery strap down to cause the motor to not rotate while I tighten it. Props are on. Now we install the ducts. The ducts. So the... I start with the middle one usually. Okay. This is going to go here. Mm-hmm. He's ignoring me. 
What? Stop. Did I not start with the middle one? Yeah, put the middle one. Let's push the there's push the middle oh, one. Oh, I didn't first. know there was I see. Yeah. Oh, there's one under so, here. <clears throat> I didn't get that. So here from the underside, we're yep. going to get the middle one. I just didn't yep. understand you. Yep. Then we're going to kind of push down on all the others. It's very flexible, so it's very easy to get it lined up. It is. It's not really rocket but science It's so here. satisfying when it drops into place. And okay. Ready? Oh, here we go. Oh, oh yeah. That's good. It's so smooth. And satisfying. Now on this one, you're going to want to get the capacitor out of the way, right? So I just wanted to up into the side a little bit. It doesn't need a lot. Okay. Get those antennas out of the way. Best to have a friend to help you. Or an acquaintance. So the capacitor is kind of tucked to the side of the duct here. Just tucked out of the way. Now these little, finally, these little things go on? Yep. Where's the other they one? They go on the back? Yeah, where's the other one? No, front. The front. Okay, on the, the front. The on back top. one. The back one is done by the antenna holder okay. upper. That's gonna go on the front. Technical they're gonna term. they're gonna slide down on the front on top of the camera. There you go. Yep. And on the back and one. On the back. We see our uh, FPV air unit. Get the antenna holder beautiful, thing in beautiful. there. Beautiful. Oh, it's so satisfying. And then the screw goes through the bottom of the GoPro mount on both sides so that it's. These are the uh, same screws that are just going to go right down into the standoffs. Yep. Okay. All right, so we've put our GoPro mount in. I've put it at the, uh, I pushed it all the way forward. I don't know okay. why I did that. Okay. But I like it there. Yeah, nice. Um, we also got to put this battery pad on. We got a little bit of Uma Grip. Uma Grip. Uma the Grip. universal super sticky battery pad. Don't need quite as much as we have here, so yeah. I'll just cut it nice. about there. Oh, it's perfect. Oh, you got that. You nailed it. Okay. Look at this. Oh, though. that's Look at that. hot. You, you got the little <laughs> SD card holder right there. But like, well, what if I want to plug in my air unit to update the firmware? You flip it over. Boom. And there's the USB-C. Yeah. It's so good. So we are done building the CineWoop, the Shen Drone Squirt. Everything's assembled. We just have to plug it into the computer, do a little bit of configuration on the, the flight controller and the ESC, and we are ready to go flying. So let's go do that now. This Cine Whoop needs to be all tuned up in the mid flights. There are a lot of things that are not working right now. For example, the motors don't spin in. Have we even plugged this in yet? We haven't even smoke checked it. Let's uh, come, come, come on over in here. Let's see what happens. We gotta smoke check it. We've got director Drew coming in to check our work. Oh God. Ah! It's okay. All right. I think that what we first need to do is show them the things that are gonna be the same for every air unit. Okay. There's a, uh, just a very few settings that everybody using DJI is gonna to need to change. Let's dive in. Okay, are we plugged in? Yes. So we're gonna connect here in the ports tab. We're gonna to need to set up our- Are we gonna reflash this first, 356? UARTs, but first we're gonna reflash it, because 356, it's that's like the Bee Gees. We're gonna firmware flasher. Mm -hmm. what, uh, what's the target for this flight controller? Do you know? The, the Omnibus S, F4SD. In case you don't know the answer to that, you can go to the CLI and type the word version and it'll show you the target. Here, That's... let's show them at home how to do it. Okay. I'm cycling the power on the flight controller, so we go out of DFU mode. Okay. Plugging it back in, now we can connect on TTUSB modem, because we're on a Mac. Wow, Good okay. work. So we can go to the CLI, and we can type the word version. Oh, version, I just hit dump and scroll all the way back up. That will also work. <laughs> or we can just look Omnibus up here where it says target, S4 SD. and the configurator. Omnibus F4SD, that's the information you need. Cool. So then we're gonna put it in bootloader mode. We can do that by typing BL at the command line, or you can hold down can, the bootloader button. You can type BL, you that's BA. In. Badass. We're now ready to flash. We're gonna go to firmware flasher. Omnibus F4 SD is what we wanna see, and we wanna flash beta flight oh. 410. Load firmware. We loaded the firmware, and we're gonna flash the firmware. All right, we're gonna connect. Beta flight 4.1 is gonna ask you to apply custom defaults. Just say, okay, yeah, sure, we're good, we're good with that. There's a reason for that, but we're not gonna dive into that. Now that we're done flashing, yep. we're gonna connect, we're gonna go to the port tab, where there are two ports we need to configure. One is you for the- one. Receiver. It's for the receiver, that's SBUS. You so, are three is for the air unit. Okay, that's and that is not, you may notice how the default is set up, that's okay, screw defaults. We're gonna go UART three, we're gonna enable the MSP column. Mm. UART one, we're gonna enable serial RX. That is literally all you have to do. It's just that easy. Nice, save the ports. Save and reboot. Check, moving on. On that tab, that's all you have to do. We're right. gonna connect again, Ready? we're gonna go configuration tab, and <clears throat> we are gonna Set up a serial receiver. Yep. And SBUS. 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 And save and reboot. So, since this is a DJI product, the very first thing you're going to want to do is register it. 
which DJI people are completely and, used to. And update it if and update the firmware. Yeah, because some new updates just came out. They're always coming out. So yeah. get your USB-C cable. It is pretty easy, easier than like with Betaflight. All you got to do is run this DJI Assistant software, and then uh, we need to power on the air unit and plug it in, and we're going to update the air unit, the controller, if you're using the controller, and the goggles. Boom! Boom. FPV air unit, Kay. start activation. If this is the first time you've done it, you'll have to make an account and all that nonsense. Do Definitely you... read all those terms, read every word of it. I have read. And Next, agree. yep. Now cool. uh, that it's activated, it'll ask you if you want to update the firmware. Downloading. The next thing we should do is we should bind our DJI controller and our goggles. So you actually have to bind the goggles first and then the controller. Yeah. If you bind the controller oh. first and then the goggles, the controller will lose its bind. So maybe we should grab some goggles yeah. too. Okay. That's right. Ding! Thank you, Paul. Plug it in. Okay, thank you. Okay. So to bind our FPV air unit and our goggles, I'm going to first plug in the air unit as well as the goggles, which are already plugged in. And then right next to the uh, micro SD port, there's a little hole, reach in, give it a poke. The LED will turn red. red. And then on the air unit goggles, there's a button next to the power, give it a poke, oh. or, it's, or it's gonna blow up. Hey, I can see Dan over there. And the LED is green. And the LED is green. Okay, goggles are so bound. goggles are bound. How do we bind the radio, Josh? <laughs> Funny you should ask that. It's as simple as pressing three specific buttons at a time. Three? Yeah, because uh, on the goggles and on the air unit, there's just one little bind button. But on the controller, you have to hold down this button right here, the record button, and this little scrolly ball. It pushes in. You push those all at the same time. But first, got to turn it on. To turn it on, whoop, whoop. Press well, it once and then hold it down. We're gonna hold down, boom, record button and the LED here goes blue. Go ahead and hit our bind button again on the air unit and we're bound. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go into beta flight and we're gonna check the receiver tab. Make sure that uh, we've got our AETR setting and it looks like we're we receiving need to, signal. What we need to see is that, first of all, that the receiver channels move. Yep. And we just double check, but this should be correct. Throttle <gasps> is throttle. Give me the full yaw left. Yaw left, yaw Good. right. Yep. Good. Pitch forward. Roll, pitch. Beauty. Roll, let's say. That's all correct. So <laughs> yep. we don't need to talk about channel mapping. So we'll go back to the config tab. What else do we need to do? Let's uh, put our motors on D shot 600 because yes, we're not sir. doing RPM filtering. Mm -hmm. Motor stop, no. ESC sensor, no. Bi directional D shot, no. no motor pulls, none of that. we're going to ignore. What do you I, set for the idle value? I do 4.0 th idle throttle value on the Cine Whoop. Um, I want it to drop a little bit faster so that if I'm like, because I'm a lot of times I'm like shooting gaps, so I want to be able to just come off throttle and keep going into something. So okay, um, so we got D shot 600. We want uh, probably 8K, 8K for the gyro and the pid loop, yep, I think. For sure. Yeah. Barrow and Magno off. We don't need a craft name because we're not. Mm -hmm. Running OSD. Air mode on, that's the default. Do you fly with air mode on? Yes. Okay, I also do. OSD, whatever, anti-gravity mm -hmm. on, dynamic filter on. All good. Uh, minimum arm angle is 180. So that disables the minimum arm, arm angle, which allows you to arm the quad at any angle. What, that, that shouldn't normally happen. Okay, we gotta set up our arming mode. Down into modes. We are gonna need the air unit turned on for that. So I'm gonna go and plug this back in. Okay, we'll and... hit add range. Hang on, in a minute I'm gonna flip this switch as soon as we're green. Okay, I'm gonna flip the switch I'm using for arming. Okay. Um, I like to use the upper left switch. Flip that switch, you should now see the little yellow indicator moving. Put the switch into the armed position. Do you push away to arm or pull towards, Paul? Push away to arm. I'm gonna push the switch away so it's in the armed position. Mm -hmm. And then I'm gonna look at where that little yellow carrot is and I'm gonna put the, drag it over so it covers it. And yep. you can hit save. Uh, should we just do turtle mode while we're here? Turtle mode, sure. Turtle mode flips quad over if you land upside down. After adding the range, we're gonna flip the switch. I like this one on the front, personally. Sure. So I'm gonna flip that and uh, put it in the turtle mode position all the way down. Yep. Okay. Again, move the slider so it covers that little carrot and hit save and angle mode. I like to use the three same three position as turtle mode. Okay. So middle position will be angle. Uh, up will be neither and down will be turtle mode. We'll put okay. it in the middle position. So we're already in the middle, so we'll leave it there. Save. Okay. Save. And then do this, hide unused modes. You can check your modes. Oh, pretty. So we got turtle mode. I've never mode. seen that switch before. Angle mode. 
off, and then arming mode, which is turning red, but once we unplug, we should be good. Yep. Okay, cool. we got our mode set up. We gotta check our motor directions. Yes. The okay. first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna check to see if we have our motors lined up with our flight controller. Now, I can tell you right now that we don't because we turned the ESC sideways and wired each motor to the ESC directly without wiring it like all the way around to like motor one to four, whatever. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go and I'm gonna go on motor one and I'm gonna start to spin it up. And what do you know, motor two on the quad starts to spin. Okay, what are we doing, Josh? I make a column and it's the slider number so we've got sliders one, two, three, and four. Okay. It's the motor position, and if that's if you look in the diagram, the positions are one, two, three, and four. Okay. And then the pin number. So what we're gonna do, the sliders are one, two, three, and four, and we're gonna okay. raise the sliders so one at a time. slider one moves motor two. Slider one moves motor two. Slider two moves motor four. Slider three moves motor one, and slider four moves motor three. three. Okay. Now we gotta go to the CLI, and we're gonna just tell you guys what to put in the CLI if you're following along, rather than making, like, try to explain to you exactly how to do it, because I think that might be confusing. Resource, motor, two, B, zero, zero. So we're just gonna take this stuff from the position column and map the pins. Motor, two, B, zero, zero. Resource, motor, four, B, zero, one. Resource, motor, one, A, O, three. Resource, Motor three, A O two, and save. Those lines, those lines, we can give them in the mm -hmm. in the video description or whatever, and they can copy paste them in. But essentially, what we've done is we've said to each. So we've taken the pin numbers for which each motor is on, and then we've said we've we've figured out which slider moves which, and we're just reassigning the pins to the proper motors, so that now when Josh goes into the motors tab, when he pushes slider one, motor one, which is this one right here, will move instead of motor three, which is what it was doing before. Yes. Motor one. How about the direction? Want to make a note of the direction yep, sure. for us? Is the wrong direction. Motor two is the correct position. Going the right way. Correct direction. Motor three, correct position mm -hmm. and direction. Mm -hmm. And motor four. It's going the wrong way. Okay, so motors one and four need to be reversed. We gotta disconnect from beta flight. Scooch on over to BL LA32. Do yep. it. Go to the port, connect, check for ESCs. Get okay. rid of all but one. Reverse it. Right, put your thing down. Just flip it, reverse it. And then get rid of that, go to motor four, unreverse it, right. Okay. So motor four was going the wrong direction because we reversed it previously. So we're now we'll unreverse it. Yep. Disconnect. Put it back to normal. Go back to the motors tab one last time to double check our work. Always double check because you think you got it right, but you might not have got it right. Correct. Good. And correct. Hey, what we do you know? Are ready Geniuses. to maiden. Are we ready to maiden? Can we put it back together and can we fly it? Can we maiden it? Can we fly it? Can we fly it? Are we ready? Throttle down, arm. Now don't raise the throttle. Just bump the pitch and roll stick a little. And if that happens, then something ain't right. Not right at all, not right at all. That's why I don't just raise the throttle. We did not stage that. You could tell from my sincere reaction that that was. <laughs> what's wrong, Paul? We got the props on. Board alignment. We didn't fix the board alignment. We have remapped the motors because we twisted the ESC 90 degrees. We also need to remap the flight controllers. So if you check it out, if you look at this 3D model here, you'll see that when I pitch the quad forward, it actually is moving on the roll axis in this 3D model. It's not <clears throat> right. Okay, so we're gonna go to the configuration tab. We're gonna put in negative 90 or 270, your pick, degrees. Save and reboot. We're gonna connect and we'll just double check here. We will pitch forward. It pit, The 3D model pitches forward. Okay, now, now we're ready now to, let's close it to up. maiden it, which we definitely didn't already do one time. While Paul is closing this up, let me remind you that we have a full config dump. All this work, if you've watched us through configuring it, that's cool because you want to <laughs> learn how to do it. But if you just want to get your quad set up the same as ours, there's a config dump. It's linked in the video description. You can paste it into the CLI, and then you'll just be set up, and you should be ready to go. Although you should still check like, you should still do your hover maiden carefully, because if anything did get screwed up, your quad will try to flip out. All right, let's maiden. Woo! Oh, those props sound good. Thank you guys so much for watching. Links to this down in the video description. Thanks to Paul Nurkula for helping us build a Cinewhoop. 
and check out some Cineweb footage. on your chest. I'll stick this on my chest. Okay. Three, two, one. <laughs> oh. Oh.